tired, I even got a flip it, I was one of the TDA4. These lot are running some crazy power, mate. I don't know how they're getting that speed up. Ah, oh, let's go. Escape me, escape me, escape me. God bless the escape me. Wonderful. I'm staying at the back, mate. I'm not even trying to. Time attack is a, a bit unique in that it doesn't matter what type of car you've got. Yeah. You can compete in time attack. So it's just a standard car, you can run it in the clubman class. Yeah. All you need is a few safety things, so you need a harness and a fire extinguisher. Right. As long as you've got that, you'll be able to compete. Really? And These guys are so much, have influenced me so much, inspired me so much, and literally, I don't know what to say, I'm lost for words. It's just, I just, want, I just want to get back home and get under the engine and start working on that car. Greetings and salutations, it's Biggie JDM here and we are back with one of the biggest budget car reveals I've ever done in my life. And in this video, we're going to reveal just what that project car build is. Now, if you remember, the last project car build we took on was a Nissan 350Z. We purchased it pretty much stock and we modded it, added all features that we needed to, ready to take it to the Nürburgring. We didn't just take it to the Nürburgring, we took it to France, then to Amsterdam, then to the Nürburgring, back through Luxembourg, to France, then back to the UK. It was absolutely fantastic. But in this project car build, I wanted something where I can pretty much do the majority of the work myself and then take it racing. In the past, I've raced first different cars around local tracks in the UK and at the Nürburgring. Some of those cars felt amazing on the track. However, I never felt as if I could go all out because if anything were to happen to it, it would be too much of a loss. I don't have a dedicated race car or a car that I can race on the track knowing it will last, that I'm not too scared to break if anything goes wrong. Until now. Hello fans and followers, it's Biggie JDM here, back with another video. And guess what I did? I brought the cheapest Subaru Impreza on Facebook Marketplace. Check it out. So if you didn't already know, the mighty Subaru Impreza GC8 comes with a flat four Boxer EJ20 engine. It's 215 brake horsepower with 213 foot pound of torque. Top speed 144 miles per hour as standard. Turbocharged all wheel drive five speed manual. As the GC8s were made from 1993 right through to 2001, this is one of the final revisions of the GC8 version 6. It's agile, tasteful and stylish and in my opinion the best Subaru ever made. Okay so there's a few reasons why I brought this Subaru Impreza okay number one reason is I wanted a track car I've got a few cars I didn't want to track the 350Z because that's too precious to me I didn't want to track the classic because that's even more precious to me but I love driving the classic like if you look at my last video when I track the classic It performs so well on the track, like all the time, but it's too precious, it's a collector's, so I thought to myself, you know, I need a track car, I need something, that a dedicated track car I can strip out, it's not going to be too precious for me to sell, it's not going to be a collector's, I'm not going to think, ah, oh, I need to sell this, I just stay on the drive and keep it, so I brought this UK 2000. Now, it's got pros and cons, and I'm going to tell you what they are right now. We'll start with the pros on this UK 2000. One, everything's original, okay? When I look at the car, everything looks original. Nothing's been tampered with. Everything looks cool. Secondly, it looks like it's got a ProDrive performance pack. I haven't gone through all the paperwork yet, but it looks like it's had the ProDrive performance pack fitted in the car. That tells me it's got a ProDrive ECU, which means it will be running a lot quicker. 
got the ProDrive exhaust system and it's got the ProDrive turbo hose. Yes, and I know the anoraks will say anyone could fit a turbo intercooler pipe and back box to the car. Well, it just so happens I found the paperwork from the manufacturer detailing that a ProDrive performance pack was fitted at purchase. It's got the original cap. That is original. It's even got the cover over it. Now, obviously, that will be coming off at some point. Nah, nah, Biggie. Let's not get beyond yourself. If you didn't already know, we need a catalytic converter in the car in order for the car to pass emissions at MOT. Unless you are building a dedicated track car which is not being put on the road. Now, if you are building a dedicated track car which is not being put on the road, in order to increase the power, removing the catalytic converter with a DCAT pipe, which bypasses the catalytic converter, making a straight through of exhaust gases to the back box, you will need something like this. However, if you do plan on taking your car on the road and expecting it to pass MOT emissions, you will need something called a sports cat, which still gives a bit of extra power, but also has a catalytic converter in order for your car to pass emissions. Hope that helps. But it is still original. And if that is original, that means I could sell that. It will pay for the exhaust that I'm going to put on it, which, you know, kills two birds with one stone. Another thing I like about the car is it's got genuine STI seats in it. Now, I don't specifically need genuine STI seats. I just need a seat to sit on. That means take them out and it can get sold. Perfect. Other thing I like about this car is the tyres. It's got Bridgestone tyres all the way around. Bridgestone. Bridgestone. Goodyear, okay, it's got Goodyear's on that. And then Goodyear's on that side. So that tells me that like, whoever's had it, it spent quite a lot of money on it, like in at some point in time. Me, I'll just use cheap tires or whatever. Another thing I, buy, I like about this car is the paperwork. It's got so much paperwork with it. Like, I can't believe how much paperwork has got, got on it. And when I had a look at the paperwork, you can see how much somebody spent on the car. It's had everything, two cam belts, you know, the service book is stamped up. It's even got the original Subaru brochure from 1999, two keys, tracker, alarm system, everything. It's got everything. And it, you know what? I just can't believe it. That's a testament. These old cars, you don't really get all the paperwork with them. Another thing I like about this car is the underbody. It's not that rusty. Rusted. Okay, there's a bit of rust on the wheel arches, a little bit of rust on, on the arches. And you know, if you want to look in the back, the suspension mounts at the top. I'll just take these seats off. They're actually all good. Like the mounts are actually cool, you know? So that's another thing I like about this car. Another thing I like about this car, it's already got four pop brake conversion. Look. Now, for those who are new to Subarus, what I mean by four-part brakes is within the brake caliper, you have pistons, if you want to call it that. And what happens is when you push the brake and the hydraulic pushes the brake fluid towards the brake caliper, it pushes the pad against the disc. Now, on the early Subarus, you only had two pistons in the brake calipers. On the later models of Subaru Classic and the New Age, they all came with four pop brakes. That meant you had two pistons either side of the brake caliper as opposed to one, which made braking a lot more accurate and a lot sharper. So someone's already done a four pop brake conversion on there and the discs don't look too much in bad nick. Obviously they will get changed to, to racing ones in due time, but that saved me half a job, mate. It has actually saved me half a job. Another thing I like about my scuba it drives absolutely wonderful like it absolutely drives so cool like i don't, don't understand like all the classics I've, it drives better than my classic i shouldn't say that so loud it does but obviously my classics on coilover so it's hard as anything but it's on original suspension everything's original so it drives absolutely wonderful Like i drove it back from where i brought it from and it was absolutely cool so you know 
these are all aspects that I look for when I look for a track car. Another thing I like about this car is the engine is absolutely quiet. It's very, very smooth, very quiet. There's no clinked bangs, like, not like my classic, <laughs> it's been through the asses. You know, it's, it's awesome. Like it absolutely sounds amazing, which means testament to the service history that it's got with it as well. Another thing I like about this car is that it's got uprated hoses. Literally, you know, someone's gone the mile, you know, you look at these ignition coil leads, you know, someone's actually gone and thought about it and spent money on this car. Like, for a classic, for what I've got it for, literally, just, I've seen worse. But this is actually all right. Now we're gonna go on to the cons. Oh dear. Right, so, first thing I knew, this color code says 95H, which tells me this is Mika Blue. Around the engine bay is Mika Blue. But the car's black. Uh-oh. However, as it's a track car, and I'm not really looking to sell it on, I, I don't mind it being in black. I really don't mind it. It's something that I can you know, live with. The second thing I don't like about it is it's got these horrible window tints on it. I hate window tints. Like, literally, I hate window tints on the car. However, I can easily heat the gun those window tints off. Easily, easily, 1000% heat, gun those window tints off, and then the tints will be gone. Okay. So, third thing I hate about this car is the spoiler. That spoiler is scabby. Absolutely scabby as heck. It needs repainting, yeah? Flaky, scabby, whatever not. However, when you're racing, the scabs aren't, more scabs that fall off the spoiler, the faster the car will go, right? Sorry, another thing I hate about this car is the gearbox. So I brought it knowing this, which, you know, was a bit of a risk, but second gear, when you put it into second, it crunches a little bit. Now, I know from having a 350Z in the past, those synchros in the gearbox always crunch. However, if I go slowly into gear, it's all right. So I'm gonna use it until it goes bang, especially if it's just gonna be a track car. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Another thing I hate about this car is the engine lights on, okay? Now, I know the person that sold it tried to plug his diagnostic into it because there is an OBD2 port on the classics. However, it's not something you can plug in an OBD reader, more than an OBD reader, and read the codes. It's not gonna work on a classic. It's a different way. And if you're not in the know, you won't know. So it's either I really got hustled or the man didn't really know. So first thing I did was come underneath here. And underneath here, if I can just shine a light, Underneath here, if I can shine a light, you will see two black connectors somewhere here. There we go, there they are. Two black connectors, right? If you plug those two black connectors in, it will turn it onto diagnostic mode, okay? And what diagnostic mode does is when you turn the key once, the engine light will flash Morse code, and those Morse code will indicate what codes are actually causing a fault. Voila! Another thing I hate about this, which is in relation to the last point, was it doesn't really go over 70 miles an hour. In fact, it drives very, very smooth, but there's no kind of boost at all. No boost at all. And that is because, because I put it in diagnostic mode, it said that the knock sensor is faulty, okay? I know from having my old RA, that when I brought that RA, it ran like absolute horrible, absolute, I can't, I'm trying to find a word here. It, did, it didn't run very good at all. And that is because it had a knock sensor fault. Now, so long as the engine's not knocking, and you can hear that by doing extensive tests when you check the car out, it's nine times out of technically with a knock sensor, okay? Which is probably why they sold it so cheap. So if I fit a knock sensor, hopefully the car will come back to life. And if it does, 
that is a bargain and a half okay this build is going to be one of my favorite builds because unlike the 350z and other cars i know subarus so the majority of the work i can do myself i grew up around subarus i know subarus so i'm going to try and do it myself so order the knock sense from import car parts inadvertently that's another story for another time but i ordered a genuine knock sensor hopefully i'm going to fit it talk it up to its correct fingers crossed it comes back to life if it does it's game on watch this video it's going to be awesome take care of yourself thank you very much later so what do you think about my new gc8 track car do you agree with the pros and cons what don't you like about my gc8 have you ever modified a gc8 and built it into a track car in the past can you give any advice to the channel what would you have done differently tell us in the comments below or get in touch with biggie jdm at instagram on the next episode the new knock sensor has arrived from import car parts and we get straight to work on the gc8 will this simple knock sensor take it out of limp mode have i wasted my money all will be revealed in the next episode another thing i hate somebody has painted very badly the center console red yuck look at this flaky like scabs Ugh. nice